Hi, my name is Amy Hazel Lushke. Thank you for joining me today. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to uh, make a recording here with you, and I'm going to present the highlights from a recent webinar we had called Your Procross Herd, Ut Utilizing the Best Bulls. So let me jump right in. If you haven't seen my first webinar, Procross the Basics, I suggest you start with that content and learn more about our company and the ideas behind Procross. Uh, this is the fourth webinar in a series of webinars we're doing this winter. And so all of the other webinars can be found on our Procross YouTube channel. Now Procross is typically implemented on a Holstein herd and we can start with either Viking Red or Montbelliard. And here I have that shown in both directions, starting with Viking Red here and Montbelliard here. And we'll get into a little bit more on that later in this talk. Carrying out the three breed rotation, like in this sway, where we start with the G1, that's uh, a two breed cross, the G2 that consists of a three breed cross. And then we come back with Holstein to create the G3 generation here. And then we repeat that throughout the cycle, um, through indefinitely through the cow's lifetime. Um, as the generations go on. And doing this um, in the three breed rotation format here provides 86% of the maximum hybrid vigor and removes all inbreeding depression. So Procross is a program that's easy to implement and maintain, and it uses high ranking bulls within each breed um, developed by our robust breeding programs. And so that's exactly what I want to talk about here in today's uh, session a little bit more. When we implement Procross, which breed should we use first? How do I follow the rotation in my herd? And how do I choose bulls for Procross? Now, please keep in mind that these are all highly subjective questions and they could have multiple correct answers. And so I want to encourage you today to consult uh, with your breeding advisors and your local distributor, and then uh, use their advice to consider your herd environment, the needs that you have, and why you came to Procross uh, to evaluate how you will make these decisions for your herd. So a little bit more on starting Procross. In the past, we recommended to use Viking Red on your virgin heifers and Montbelliard on your cows. And that advice from the past was based on the idea that the Viking Red would ensure easy calving, while Montbelliard in the past historically was a more difficult sire calving ease breed. The problem with that is then you'd end up with uh, cows in both both types for your G1 generation. So both this F1 type and this two breed type um, to start Procross. And the problem with that is that when you do the first generation in both ways, you have a lot more within herd variation from the two types. Plus keep in mind, you will still have older pure Holstein cows in your herd um, that are the dams of this first generation as well. And so that's your that amount of variation tended to be unsatisfactory for people starting Procross. Today, I recommend we choose one direction to start. I like that phrase, keep it simple. We just wanna um, stick with one way to reduce that variation. And that seems to make a, a more pleasant experience for people starting Procross. So which breed to start with first? Well, there's a few different things I suggest that you consider when choosing. The first one let's talk about here is body size. Now Viking Red is the smallest of the three breeds in Procross. And so it will reduce your frame size the most if you pick Viking Red first over Montbelliard. And I do suggest that if you struggle with excessively small stall sizes or small parlor sizes with your cows, However, do realize that when you go to the extremely small size, you will experience more variation in body size between that G1 generation and that foundation Holstein, like I mentioned. Now, if you do go with Montbelliard first, you will experience a slightly reduced frame size because Montbelliard is a smaller breed than Holstein. Um, however, you should expect about similar body weight because this Montbelliard creates a high level of body condition. Let's talk about the calving ease traits. 
Viking red definitely is the calving ease and low stillbirth breed of this rotation. So if that's really important to you, start here. Look at Viking red for calving ease. And keep in mind too that when you use the Viking red to make your G1 generation, they're also a maternal calving ease breed. So they will have no problem giving birth to this Montbelliard sired calf for the for the third or sorry for the second generation. Regarding Montbelliard, we, I have a lot less concern today recommending Montbelliard on the basis of calving ease. This breed's made tremendous progress on uh, better calving ease bulls and just um, the general uh, ability of these cows to produce a live calf as well. Um, so if, but I always do recommend, especially on heifers, using a calving ease Montbelliard bull and you can also consider sex semen if that's a concern too, because sex semen does reduce the, uh, the calving difficulty. And on average, the calving ease score of that Montbelliard bull would increase um, from say like a 90 to a 94 or a 93. So roughly three to five points of improvement is what we see for sex semen on Montbelliard. Now Viking Red will tend to be more like a Holstein in appearance uh, in that G1 generation with of course an, a slightly higher body condition score. The Montbelliard on the first generation is a different looking cow than what you are typically used to looking at with Holstein. So it will have those Alpine breed traits and the very high body condition compared to this type of cross. So look for that white face, of course, that's a Montbelliard trait, the thicker neck and brisket. And this is a type of cow that you'll find develops more after calving than before calving. So don't be alarmed when you see a heifer calve in that you might be thinking, oh my gosh, that udder and that chuffiness of this cow, she will slim down after calving and she does a lot of development in that way. Go to Viking Red first if you're especially looking for pole genetics or if that's important for your organic production system, if you're looking for better hoof health traits, and if the fat percentage is particularly important to you to raise that fast. On the Montbelliard first, this breed will offer you more salvage value and carcass value uh, of your herd, but then also of the male calves. The Montbelliard first offers the highest level of fat and protein volume to the rotation and that G1 cow is, um, is often found to be at or above the, the level of the pure Holstein on fat plus protein. And the Montbelliard offers more longevity as the first cross compared to the Viking Red and that comes from many of the um, research trials that have been done on the first couple generations of Pro Cross. Now, there is a simple way to follow this rotation, of course. Uh, we're going to assign a breed of service sire to each cow for their lifetime. Um, and we can do that in a number of ways. One way is to des uh, designate a special field in your herd management software, and I recommend this as a permanent record, or you can do it in a notebook um, in that way of a permanent record as well. You can work with your breeding advisor and develop a mating plan um, that specifies that sire breed to breed to each cow. And then another option I do like and a lot of people grab onto is using a color coded ear tagging system for a quick visual way for your inseminators to know which breed of service sire goes into that cow. So for example, over here in the, the graphic, you could pick a blue tag to designate a cow that's a Holstein Viking red cross for your uh, first cross. And then when you see that blue tag, you know that this cow needs to be bred to Montbelliard. Likewise, you could pick a, a red tag here for the Montbelliard Holstein cross. And then you know every time you see that red tag, she should be bred to Viking red. And yellow, for example, could be the breed to Holstein color. And you can pick any color you want or design this system to your liking. So let me talk then last about choosing bulls for pro cross. My main advice here is above all, use the high ranking bulls evaluated within each breed. And if you work with our companies, you will get this automatically. 
we only sell and market the bulls that are high ranking within our breeds and are proven within our system. But be aware that there are other types of lines out there marketed by other companies that are impersonators um, of what we do with Procross. And if you look at some of the genetics they offer, they might be derived from the same sires and families as our program, but they aren't evaluated within the same proving system. And so typically we cannot directly compare these bulls with our bulls and they tend to be poor genetic options uh, overall when we look at the quality of genetics that are there. And then we also, along with that, we'll see that other brands uh, try to claim the performance and the economic results that we've seen in our studies, but beware that that's just not the case when you're using a bull that's typically of poor genetic quality. One way that I suggest that you look at our, our bulls that we offer for Procross is we've developed a customized selection index called the Procross rank. Um, now for pure breeding, each of the Viking Red, Viking Holstein and Copex Montbilliard populations are selected within country from their native index. And that is the NTM for Viking Red and Holstein and the ISU for Montbilliard. Overall, a selection index allows balanced breeding decisions because it's an easy way to rank animals for their overall genetic value without some subjective evaluations of individual traits or a need uh, to impose the individual cutoff for a specific trait. Um, the, so the PCR, the Procross ranking, is a tool that applies a slight re-ranking to these top NTM and ISU bulls in order to create the best results for Procross cows. Um, and we've developed this system based off of what our customers recommend for the type of bull that they prefer for crossbreeding. And then what makes sense with uh, what we see for a heritability and for what traits provide the biggest boosts in hybrid vigor. So, the PCR index is based off of the science and economics behind NTM and ISU. And what we're doing here is really just making small tweaks that re-rank these bulls at the top of the list. The PCR is calculated separately for, for Procross users that are participating in a fluid market. We call this PCRL for liquid. And we do that separately for uh, producers as well in a component milk market. We call that PCRS for solids. I want to show you a little bit more about how PCR changes the native index of these breeds. So really what we targeted here within Viking Holstein is we wanted to increase her production, increase the udder conformation, and then make her smaller in stature. Now you might scratch your head when I say we're going to emphasize production and utter even more on a Holstein who is already strong in those two traits. And the reason we do that is because these are highly heritable traits and they have low amounts of hybrid vigor when you cross Holstein with other breeds. And so we really can't rely on the hybrid vigor to increase production and utter. We must select for that as an individual trait. And then again, the smaller stature. Remember our goal with Procross is to create uniform size cows. And we do that by shrinking down the Holstein, bringing up the body size of the Viking Red so that when we cross them, we get a very homogenous looking cow. Now how that appears here on the weights of the index, on these top two bars, I'm showing Viking Holstein. This bar here is the native index, the Nordic total merit. It has 32% emphasis on production, 60% emphasis on the health traits, and 8% on the type traits. And with these changes that I outlined here, we do increase production up to 39, and we also increase the type traits up to 37%. Now that seems like a big change here for Holstein increasing type that much. However, please realize that the correlation of the the ranking of these bulls, when we correlate those two indexes, the correlation is 0.86 out of a maximum total of one. So we're really not actually like flipping the whole ranking. 
we're just making adjustments in the top of the ranking that pulls up these bulls that we like to see used in Procross. So let me move on to the other breeds, the same types of ideas here for Montbelliard. We increased udder conformation. We moderated the frame size, and we do that because there are some large bulls and some very small bulls in Montbelliard, and neither of those make very homogeneous body sizes. So we dock those bulls for their body size on the, on the ends of the spectrum and, um, and make it so that we're using bulls that are more moderate, more average in the population. And then we also regard uh, sire calving ease in the same way. We're docking those bulls that are very difficult for sire calving ease. Lastly, we uh, chose to increase the weight on improving temperament. With those small changes in Montbelliard, the graphic here of what we're doing within each of these three major categories doesn't really change a whole lot because um, we didn't tamper with their already high level of production here. Um, and so this correlation is 0.96 for how the re-ranking works in Montbilliard um, between ISU and between PCR. Now this will change later in the year because the Montbelliard ISU will be moving to a new selection scheme and we'll be updating you on that as we go. And lastly here with Viking Red, uh, we do the same types of things as with Holstein increasing production. So that's a bigger shift here. We did also increase the utter conformation within PCR from what it was in NTM. And as I mentioned earlier, we increased body size as well to make cows more uniform. The correlation in the Viking red breed between these two indexes turned out to be a 0.93. I wanna quickly show you three bulls that we really like in the Procross system today. Um, this is after the December and the February proof day in 2022 here. So for the Viking red breed, we, I wanna show you VR Vesti. He is the highest uh, available bull for NTM and also for PCR, uh, PCRS specifically. So he's a Nordic total merit of 38, very high PCRS scores here within the breed. Um, the reason that he ends up high for Procross ranking is that he does have an extremely high production index at 129. He's a, a higher uh, frame and stature bull, so he will increase body size of those Viking Red, um, Viking Red Sired Procross cows. And then he's also fantastic for utter composite at 113. If we look at Pactol, Pactol is the third highest bull in the breed for ISU in France, uh, but he's top here for Procross ranking. His ISU is 165, so extremely high. Uh, 615 for the solids pro cross ranking. And the reason he's up there, he carries a, a INEL a production index of plus 42. So he's very high in fat plus protein solids and also does well in percentages. Um, his sire calving ease is 93. So that's very high in the breed also, very easy. Um, his stature is 99, so right at average there and a very good utter composite at 113. His temperament score is also right about average. Uh, when we look at VH Philman then for the Holstein, Philman is the third highest active bull in the Viking Holstein lineup, but he does jump up in the Procross ranking. He's 37 in NTM, uh, 599 in the Procross uh, ranking solids. And the reason that he improves when we look at the pro cross ranking is, again, he has a very high production index. He's average for stature at a 103, but then he has that very high utter composite at 119. So those are the topics I wanted to talk about today, but just to recap some of the big ideas that I wanna convey on pro cross. When you're implementing and carrying out your crossbreeding plan. Choose distinct pure breeds with sizable populations and ones that have progressive selection programs. If you look for the recordings of our other webinars, I talk about that in depth um, elsewhere. We also talk about breeds that are complementary and their strengths and weaknesses. And we've compared our three breeds to other breeds with um, 
to look and explain why we use Viking Red, Montbelliard, Copex Montbelliard, and Viking Holstein as our three breeds for Procross. Um, we did an inbreeding and a hybrid vigor webinar to show you why using three breeds in a rotation is ideal for getting the best benefit from your hybrid vigor. And then from today's webinar, use the, the highest ranking bulls in each breed. And uh, hopefully I've given you some tools to do that. Please get back with your breeding advisor if you'd like to look at our indexes or develop your custom index for your own herd. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you have any questions about this content or any of our other materials or anything else to do with Procross, you're welcome to email me and I'm happy to work with you. Thanks so much, have a great day.